This video is meant to be a short introduction to uh, the Satanic Hebrew Roots Movement. And over time, I have come to deal with this topic uh, in a more personal way, as there are people in my life who are affected by it. And my, my understanding of the Hebrew Roots Movement is that it's Seventh-day Adventism on steroids. That is, um, it's devoid of grace completely. Um, even among Seventh-day Adventist circles, I know firsthand that there was some grace there for people. But the Hebrew Roots Movement is a an exodus or a departure from uh, New Testament Christianity and it seeks to put people back under the law as a means to go to heaven. Now obviously Paul addressed these kinds of folks uh, a couple thousand years ago almost and a couple of the places that we're going to go is going to be Hebrews chapter 10 and also Galatians. Um, there was Judaizers that had come along and said you have to keep the law, you have to keep the law of Moses, you have to be circumcised. Um, the big emphasis here with people is Sabbath keeping. Sabbath is a picture to, to these people of uh, a covenant relationship with God. Only Folks, the Hebrew Roots Movement, this is why I say it's Seventh-day Adventism on steroids. It's because um, they won't even allow themselves to say the word God. Um, they try to go all Hebrew on everything. They'll say Elohim or Yahuwah or Yeshua, um, and they'll throw a whole bunch of words out there. And as such, they reject New Testament Christianity, and they reject Jesus Christ. Um, <clears throat> My Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess to the glory of God the Father that Jesus Christ is Lord. And these people will give you another uh, Christ, another Jesus, another gospel. It's, it's a gospel of pure works. If you break the Sabbath, you do not go to heaven. It's the covenant relationship uh, between man and God. And it is a sign that you're really one of God's people if you sit at home on Friday evening when the sun goes down until Saturday evening when the sun goes down. And it proves that you really truly do love God. Or Elohim as they say. Now, as I've said, I've, I've had some personal dealings with this. And... Um, it really grieves me to no end. It, it grieves me a, a great deal because uh, people that I love are personally affected by this. And um, I'm just going to start in Hebrews chapter 10. And this is just meant to be a short introduction. Um, I'm going to actually have to get myself up to speed on all of this because um, it is very deep. It's very confusing. And I don't like to present a really confusing doctrinal mess. I like to boil things down and keep it simple. Um, so in its simplest form, the Hebrew Roots Movement rejects New Testament Christianity. They reject the person of Jesus Christ. And obviously they're going to reject the Apostle Paul. Um, they loathe and hate and detest the Apostle Paul. And... They must do so because Paul, with the gospel, presents, um, for example, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Well, that right there should shut their mouths. But to top it all off, I've come across this whole... Um, area of this Hebrew Roots Movement that they'll use any translation but the King James Bible. The King James Bible to them is satanic. They will go from 
translation to translation, picking out whichever one they want. And they even have their own version where they take God out of it, Jesus out of it, and try to substitute all these Hebrew names. Now, people should know by now where I stand with the King James Bible. Um, it is the pure word of God, preserved, and um, it is for us. And my Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And these, these people think that they're going to be holy by leading you away from this and putting you back in bondage under the law. They, they think that somehow they're going to honor God. But as I said, Paul's already dealt with these people. He dealt with them through the Galatians because they brought another gospel. He called them accursed. And he dealt with them um, in this very beautiful letter to the Hebrews. And um, I would encourage you to uh, read both of them a couple of times. Now, as, as I go through this, um, I want to uh, just take this kind of slow, and, and I'm going to read part of Hebrews chapter 10 today, and just kind of get started to where um, we start to get an understanding of, of where these people are coming from. I'm actually going to uh, read some of their own literature, and um, I'm going to apologize in advance because it is not the King James Bible. It's, it's their own twisted uh, version of it. And they're always going to go in the New Testament, if they're going to use the New Testament, they will cherry pick verses that look like you need to keep the law, that you need to work your way to heaven. And uh, because they have rejected God's free gift of grace, they are blinded still to the truth that uh, no amount of good works can get them to heaven, no, no good works can keep them saved, no, no amount of good works can please God. God is not pleased with somebody sitting at home on the Sabbath. Because Hebrews chapter 4 makes it very clear that Jesus Christ is our Sabbath. He fulfilled everything and we, we are at rest in Him. And the New Testament church um, would meet on the first day of the week. They'd also meet on Saturdays. Uh, whenever they wanted to meet, they would meet. We have liberty in Christ. We don't have to set aside a certain day. Um, we can meet any time we like to fellowship with one another. So, um, it is a very twisted, distorted view of, of who God really is and what God really says through His Word. And beginning in Hebrews chapter 10, Paul explains, For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Now let me stop right there. I've observed with, with these Hebrew roots people that while wanting to go under the law, I've noticed a great lack of animal sacrificing going on. And... Um, a lack of building temples. Even with uh, the Mormon cult, you know, with their temples, um, they don't bring um, goats and sheep and cows in there to sacrifice. Uh, they have a lot of other strange things going on that, that are tied to the Freemasonry uh, people. But uh, these Hebrew Roots Movement people, they don't get together and sacrifice animals. At least I haven't heard of any. Now, if you have, by all means, let me know, because that, that would be brand new information to me. Verse 2, For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Now, what Paul is doing here is showing us that the sacrifices of the Old Testament where um, the blood of, of bulls and of goats, 
that was shed, it could not take away the sins of the people. Um, the high priest would even have to make sacrifice for himself. Now, Jesus being our high priest, um, he died once for all. And being perfect, he alone fulfilled God's will in all of this so that man can be reconciled to God. And even when Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross, the veil was rent in twain from top to bottom. It wasn't torn from the bottom to the top, but from the top to the bottom, signifying that it was the work of God himself. And these people have so many flaws when it comes to um, the way they cherry pick scripture and of course their lack of understanding and their misuse of scripture and hating the King James Bible. All of this together um, keeps them blind and in the dark and servants of Satan. Verse 5, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Uh, because all of those things are done as a remembrance, it was to point to the coming Messiah, to the Lord Jesus Christ, who clearly in the New Testament fulfills the Old Testament. And that is the terrible injustice of this wicked satanic heresy because they will deny Jesus Christ who died on the cross. And my Bible says his name is Jesus. He is the Christ, the Messiah. And um, obviously Jesus is his name in English. And in Spanish his name would be Jesus. Um, in Hebrew he'd be something else. I don't speak those other languages. So I know him as Jesus Christ and there's nothing wrong with that. That, that is a very perverted way of thinking. Um, the Hebrew roots seeks to put everybody back into uh, the Old Testament. And um, things aren't going to happen that way. Today, it's not like when the children of Israel was wandering through the desert um, for 40 years. Uh, there's no manna raining down, no quail. Um, the shoes on their feet didn't wear out. The clothing didn't wear out. And... They're trying to go back to a time that does not exist anymore. So, at the same time, they want to keep the Sabbath. They want to keep the, the other Ten Commandments. Um, then, if they light a fire on the Sabbath, they violated God's holy Sabbath. Therefore, the punishment, the penalty for that would be death. They should be taken out and stoned to death for uh, violating God's holy Sabbath. So... All of these things add up to a very twisted, distorted view of Holy Scripture. And they ignore the coming Christ who would die on the cross and pay for the sins of the whole world. You see, people have this innate desire to, to try to please God their own way and work, work, work to try to get to heaven. And it can't be done. God already did the work for us. The Father sent the Son to die on the cross to pay for the sins of the whole world. He called forth from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. <clears throat> have you had the heavens open and have that said to you lately? I haven't. But I'm in Christ and all the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything that Jesus inherits is for us too. Everything, all of eternity. And... We, we see here in Hebrews chapter 10 uh, the plan that God has that, that the blood of bulls and of goats was not going to take away sin. Look at verse 5. Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me, and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me. Oh, I love that phrase. In the volume of the book it is written of me. Folks, the Old Testament is about Jesus Christ. You can take Isaiah 53 and point a Jew to Jesus Christ. Because true Judaism 
is fulfilled in Christianity. Now listen to me very carefully. Okay, I'm not talking about uh, a lot of what we see today. Um, but if a person truly wants to know who Jesus Christ is, and uh, they, they can recognize that they're a sinner, and they can be shown the, the truth of God's Word, and Jesus Christ is revealed to them on the pages of the Old Testament. I mean, that's what Paul wrote from. That's what Paul expounded upon. Peter, James, um, they use the Old Testament over and over again. Um, they, they took passages of the Old Testament and expounded them to reveal to us the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember, the Word of God is built line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And this Hebrew Roots movement seeks to destroy New Testament Christianity. Now, in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God, above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither haddest pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. You see that? The old covenant was completed. It was done away with. It was no longer in effect because the new covenant, this reconciling of, of sinners to the Lord Jesus Christ, to the Father through the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, um, people in the Old Testament, they were not sealed by the Holy Spirit. That was given at Pentecost. And Yes, the Spirit did work in people. That did not mean that they could lose their salvation, but that is a very distinct dispensational difference. Um, so, he taketh away the first that he may establish the second. The old covenant is done away with. It is no more. It was fulfilled. Um, because... We are speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Old Testament who was prophesied to come to do the will of the Father and to save mankind. Verse 10, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And this here is a good example as to why we cannot lose our salvation, which is another satanic thing the Hebrew Roots Movement teaches. The salvation can be lost if you violate um, Yahashua, Yeheshua, whatever it is, their covenant. You violate this covenant, then salvation can be lost. You can be separated from God and no longer be recognized as a child of God. But Jesus Christ died once for all. He's not going to come back and die again. He's already paid for the sins of the whole world once, and that is sufficient. Because if you could lose your salvation, if salvation could truly be lost, Jesus would have to come back and die again and to pay the price again. And then that would nullify the effect of the first death on the cross, the first resurrection. Um, if Jesus Christ didn't die once and for all for everyone and everyone that believes in him could be saved once and for all, then uh, there wouldn't be any point of it. Because the first time he came to do the will of the Father, when the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased, well, the Father would have been a liar. Jesus would have been a liar. Um, Hebrews here, Paul, would be a liar. And that is why it's so important to understand the, the doctrine of eternal security. It is the gospel. It's not just something you spring on people later. They need to understand when you witness to them that salvation is once for all. It, eternal security is the gospel. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, 
sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Friends, I want you to get the eternal perspective. I want you to see you the way God sees you. He sees you as perfect and holy. You say, well, I sure don't feel like it. I feel like a miserable wretch. Yes, I understand. God sees you as perfect and holy. Because all of time is before him at the same time. Um, and I'd like for you to understand the eternal perspective uh, that God sees us in eternity with a glorified eternal body, perfect, holy, justified, righteous, and what he did on the cross for us is once and for all, and this salvation can never be lost. It can never be given away. It can never be taken away. God has given us a precious gift, and um, he doesn't change his mind. And from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Now at the second coming, Jesus Christ is going to return seven years after the rapture. And he's going to put everything on this earth under his feet. But even then, it's not the total completion of it. Because while the people that remain on the earth will go into the millennium, the children born to these people will have to make a decision to whether or not they want to believe on Jesus Christ or at the end of the millennium follow the devil. And attack the New Jerusalem and the saints there. Sadly, even with a thousand years of peace, these people, a lot of them, will reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And the devil will lead them to their destruction. Even knowing what is written in this book about them. Isn't that amazing? Um, these people will have a thousand years of listening directly to the Lord Jesus Christ and seeing how things were fulfilled. How much has been fulfilled? Um, by then, of course, the rapture will have occurred. Seven years of tribulation, the second coming, the brightness of his coming, their parents telling them this is what's happened. They've been born into this time period of great peace. Everything's at rest. There's no war. There's no fighting. Um, People are just growing their crops and living on the land and getting along. And at the end of this time, even knowing all of this, many will turn their hearts away and they will not believe. And they will side with the devil after all of that is said and done. And I find that to be terribly sad. But someday we're looking at a time when his enemies will be made his footstool. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop here, but I am going to keep continuing in the next video in chapter 10. And also we're going to be looking at Galatians. We're going to be reading some of their material. Uh, so, um, that's going to do it for this video. This is just meant to be an introduction to this. And I do not know how many of these I'm going to make. Um, I want to make one or two and keep coming back to it every now and then until um, I've come to the conclusion that I've done enough in that area. So until next time, God bless you and take care.